What is going on YouTube? My name is Tony Pollock with Real Life Trading. Here to give you an update on your weekly levels, where these charts are trying to go. We're also gonna dive into AMD making a really big move. How can you play it? And also some key levels here on Tesla. Again, as always, leave some comments down below and I'm happy to go over whatever tickers you wanna throw into there, ask some questions. Uh, again, love to do it. So let's start with the market spy in the queues and try to figure out what's what, what are they doing? What are some key levels that we wanna watch? All right, so with his here with SPY, it's pulling back. There are a lot of gaps left open on SPY, which is a big deal because SPY loves to fill its gaps. It hardly ever leaves gaps behind. Now, we also have some gaps up and through here. You can kind of see my little note here, open gap at 421. If we just zoom back far enough, we've also got some more juice up and through here. So there are still some gaps to the upside. Really, we're, we're into this short area. We've been in this short area for quite a few months. Every time it tries to make its move through here, it just falls short, okay? And that kind of tells me that really the only bull moves we're getting are bear squeezes. I think that's pretty much it. There really aren't that many bulls here to play, and as evident over here. I mean, as soon as we went bearish, over here, there's extremely big bear move. We go bearish over here. All of the bears load in. This entire move is just a bear squeeze. Because once it got to the place for the bulls to actually show strength, they failed. No one stepped in. Same thing here. Broke some key levels. Broke down. All the bears get in. What was this move? A bear squeeze. Right back up. We get back into this key level again. And what are the bulls doing? Nothing. Shopping. Can they finally step in? Of course they can. But I'll believe it when I see it. So right now, this week, what I'm keeping a very close eye on is this 422 level. And I want to see us come up. And if we come up and trap again, if we get another daily candle that looks like this, that's going to trap the bulls and that's going to lead to a bear move. I don't know how big of a bear move, but we got a gap down here and we've got gaps down at 395 to 400. So I think this would be a really nice trade to play. If we do break down again, what's going to happen? The bears are going to commit pretty hard, which means... It's probably going to get bought up as soon as we start filling these gaps. And there goes your big bull move. What is it really? It's just bears getting squeezed. The only moves up are when the bears are just exiting. So plan on that. In order for us to really squeeze higher, I think we need a lot more bears to commit. So keep an eye on that. We're just chilling. Um, we have inflation data coming out Wednesday and Thursday. That's going to be a catalyst. The options are saying it's nothing. There's not going to be very much of a movement expected, which is interesting. But really, your key levels now are kind of into this 404 mark. What happens here? Do we break down and immediately get bought up again? We did break this low by just a couple pennies. And then you can see we've had a nice move higher. Can that continue? Yes. If we come up to this high side and we close strong, I think we gap up and don't really look back. And we probably squeeze straight to 430. So that's kind of the levels I'm looking at on SPY. In the middle of this is just kind of a mess. It's going to be really hard to read. I don't think we're going to get that much movement. Once we can get outside these range or into, into these ranges, it's going to be very, very interesting. This is where you want to trade. This is where you want to wait for. Same thing down here at 404. It's going to get lots of fun for day trading, reading some sentiment, all that good stuff. Q's is basically the exact same story. Q's are already trying to push into this resistance area. Are we going to break out above it and reject, or will we close strong? If Q's can close strong, we're going straight up to that magical 333 number again, which was the high back when we shorted this thing earlier. So, or not the high, but pretty much, you know, the area that we wanted to short of that. I will be looking to short this. Q's look strong. We'll see if they can hold it or if this is going to be a trap it's so obvious and all the bulls will probably jump in there it should be very bullish especially if spy is still lagging like it is right now cues are a lot stronger than spy or is a lot stronger than spy so if the cues break out strong and spy is still kind of struggling to get up above 421 look for a trap probably a little bit of a pullback we'll find out if the bulls step in and if not it's going to get a nice move lower we've got gaps down here that still need to fill in this 308 mark and then we'll see if the bulls can re reclaim this area where the bulls should buy at so very pivotal spot here on the queues keep an eye for what happens this should be what you're looking to trade over the next few days awesome 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 levels especially getting this extended i mean we jump out to a two hour right now on on queues we're getting up there on the rsi 
And we're starting to get some bearish divergence coming through on the RSI. Not a whole lot, but if we keep squeezing up, expect that trap to come in. That's what I'm waiting on. That's what I'm keeping a close eye on and watching. It just makes a ton of sense. Now, if we close super strong, then I pull back a little bit and probably off to the moon, right? So key, key levels coming in across the board here. AMD jumping in, making huge moves on AMD. This is a great squeeze. If we come out to a weekly chart, this is looking strong. So, so strong. I did buy puts here off of the monthly high. So those puts came down. They're working pretty well. We bought some calls. And unfortunately, the two weeks on those calls, we did them over. Pretty sure it was over earnings. Yeah, it was over earnings play. Those calls, we sold puts, bought some calls just in case to protect ourselves, put a little collar on this thing. And we just got out of those calls this morning for break even, small loss, and like 7% loss ish, somewhere in there. And they only had 11 days left on it. So I was happy to exit out of this on this nice big move. Really, now your key levels, if you want to play AMD, you're going to watch very closely what happens between 93 and 90. That level is going to be such a big level for the bulls to step in. If they want to follow through with this, that's where they need to find some buyers. So today needs to close strong. Tomorrow, a little bit of a pullback. And you should see some lower wicks on tomorrow's daily candle. If you don't, and we come down and there's really no buyers, this could just be a squeeze, false breakout, and a move down. I don't expect that to happen. This looks pretty strong. I think there's a lot of bears exiting here again. You're getting these big bull moves on short squeezes. Look how strongly we close down. And then we came back up, all the bears recommitted, and now all the bears are just getting out. That's really the only thing moving these markets are, where are the bears getting squeezed? So watch for the bears to commit and then start getting squeezed out. It's a really easy play, but also if it comes back down and we don't bounce here, you're gonna see bears recommit. That was your bull trap. And again, traps are kind of the ways the markets are moving. If we can start getting some momentum down, it's gonna start falling again. The monthly chart is extremely weak into very big levels. It makes sense for that to probably happen. But we'll find out right here. If the bulls step in, then we're going to head right back up to 100. The weekly chart looks like that's going to happen. The last one here is the Tesla. The Tesla machine with a little inverted head and shoulders action going on here. Um, I am still waiting on Tesla to probably pull back down to 167, 165 range. That's going to be, again, your key spot for do the bulls come into play. And then starting back up. I am still waiting on Tesla to get down to this 147, the gap fill area, 146 ballpark. I think that's still very doable. I think the consumer is very weak in this market. And again, you have a big, strong move down. I do believe this is mainly just a bear squeeze. We're going to come into this gap fill up here. That's where the bear should recommit and try to push us back over. So... Your weekly chart still looks incredibly soft. I mean, this is a very strong close down on a weekly chart. We're going to work our way back into these EMAs most likely this week. So look for short opportunities from 176 to 182 on Tesla. I think that should be a great play for it to roll back over. If it doesn't roll over there, then, well, bulls are stepping in. But this chart just looks incredibly weak, taking out necklines. I think Tesla has the possibility to go right back down to 120. Without a doubt. I, I I don't think it's going to be that hard for Tesla to sink right back down because the monthly chart on Tesla is very broken. So I hope this helped you, gives you an idea of how to play some of these things. Um, again, on Tesla, re little recap, bulls should step in here at 166, 165. Should be buying that thing up if we get a pullback. The bear should recommit up around 176 to 185 area. Bear should be there. So look for it. Sit back, be patient, find the entry. Wait for the commitment to happen on a shorter time frame, right? If you can get a nice double top on a 15, you don't have to just jump in blind and get burned. Wait for the weakness to come in and then see if it reverses. And then, of course, it's always just a 50-50 shot. Have your risk in play of what you're willing to lose. But that's how I'm looking to play Tesla. I'm going to be doing some credit spreads on Tesla here. So when we get up into this, I'll be selling some bear call spreads and kind of see. I've got some bear call spreads queued up if we can get up there. I wanted to do that this morning, and it kind of just sank without me. I was hoping we'd get one more pop. If we come back down, I probably want to look for some bull put spread action down into here and see if the bulls will commit. Again, only getting in when I see that commitment, that strength on the bull side on the smaller time frames. So that's a few ways of playing this. Um, there is a lot of money to be made just in these levels that I showed you today. So be patient. Sit back and find your levels, and you will be successful. Just lose small, win big. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for giving me a few minutes of your time today.
Give me a like if you found this video somewhat beneficial to you. You should have. Again, market out key levels. That's how you're going to make your money. Sit and watch reactions and then jump on it. So love you guys. And thanks for your time. Let me know how I can uh, improve. Let me know how I can help you in your trading. If there's certain tickers you want me to look at, throw them in the comments. I'm happy to go with it. See you guys. Have a great week.